Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. A new study says the majority of people paying for sex are married white men. The University of Minnesota took a deep look into who's buying sex in the state and where they're going to find it. Their data shows it's average, everyday looking men with some disposable income, typically from 30 to 50 years old. However, authorities say it has less to do with age and race, saying it's a reflection of the community. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson explains why only a small number of those men get arrested. It's likely only 1% of people who've purchased sex have been caught by police, according to a new study. We plan on doing a couple While more that wouldn't here. surprise Police. Lieutenant Shanna Merziska, he's not sure that percent is accurate, five, saying there isn't a way to is know. We'd love to do a lot more to deal with those issues, but it's a very difficult case for us to work because neither the victim, the suspect, or anyone, the male buying the sex who's also committing a crime, None of those three people wants to talk very much with law enforcement. While the department used to simply arrest men who paid for a prostitute, their goal now is to bust sex traffickers and give the resources to the victims who are being sold to try and get them out of that life. We can't completely stop prostitution, just like we can't completely stop drunken driving. We can't stop speeding, but we can intervene in the most victimized areas, which is the juvenile stuff and the traffic people. And that's our goal. Recently, they've done that by setting up underage sex stings, arresting over a dozen men in the Fargo-Moorhead area. And that sends a pretty strong signal through the community, we believe, don't do that. What it comes down to is resources. Both Fargo and Moorhead hope to do more, but says it takes a lot. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. The study also finds Backpages.com is the most common way people are buying sex. This week, Senator Heidi Heitkamp helped introduce a bill to hold websites like Backpages.com accountable for their role in sex trafficking. Some of us are seeing a few showers and storms, but overall, a dry Friday. Will it stay that way this evening, Justin? And thank you, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, most of us will stay dry as we make our way through this evening. Temperatures not bad for this time of year. No extreme heat, but it is seasonably warm. We are near 80 in the Fargo area, 78 Jamestown, 74 Devils Lake, and Bemidji holding at 76 degrees. Most of us with partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies, especially into the Devils Lake Basin, Southern Valley, James River Valley, and most of Lakes Country right now. We are seeing a couple of thunderstorms maybe making their way through just off to the east of the Hallock area and now moving just west of the Thief River Falls area. Some heavy rain and some lightning with these. Also, another uh, brief shower developing into portions of northeastern Otter Tail County. Now, as we go through this evening, we are going to keep partly cloudy to mostly clear skies as temperatures fall through the 70s into the 60s and then eventually into the 50s. We have a cool overnight period. But more much needed rain is in store for this weekend. I'll tell you who is going to get it coming up later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. We have breaking news tonight. Emergency crews are responding after a car crashed into a Walmart store in Grand Forks. Dispatchers confirmed that the crash happened at the 32nd Avenue South location just before 4 this afternoon. We're getting reports that the building had to be evacuated. At this point, we don't know if anyone was hurt, but we are working to get more information from authorities. Right now, we know that Grand Forks police and fire departments are on the scene. We're following a developing story also out of Grand Forks tonight. Police are investigating a robbery that happened early this morning at the Spring Hill Suites off of 42nd Street. Police say an employee told them a man wearing all white with his face covered came in during a power outage and used a note to demand money. The man left before police got there. The man is described as being 5'6 to 5'8 with a slim build. Anyone with information is asked to call the Grand Forks Police Department at 787-8000. It's Friday and time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Venus Tutu is wanted for unauthorized use of personal ID, which is a felony. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on her. To date, the Valley's Most Wanted program has helped Fargo Police make 588 arrests. 
The Minneapolis school that was rocked by a deadly explosion and building collapse earlier this week will still be dealing with the damage into the upcoming school year. Officials made the announcement today that classes will be delayed about two weeks for some students. A team from the National Transportation Safety Board arrived in Minneapolis yesterday to start investigating the cause of the natural gas explosion at the Minnehaha Academy. Contractors were working in the school at the time, and some witnesses said they were warned of a gas leak just moments before the blast. Meanwhile, one of the victims remains in critical but stable condition with what family members are calling traumatic injuries that will require additional surgeries. Brian Duffy is listed as an assistant boys soccer coach and is receiving treatment at the Hennepin County Medical Center. The nation's top law enforcement official is vowing to crack down on government leaks. President Trump has been pushing his attorney general to do more to stop leakers. Mola Lenghi reports from the White House. Attorney General Jeff Sessions issued a warning to would-be leakers. We will investigate and seek to bring criminals to justice. We will not allow rogue anonymous sources with security clearances to sell out our country. Sessions said there's been a dramatic growth in the number of unauthorized disclosures of classified national security information and pointed to this week's publication of transcripts from the president's calls with the leaders of Mexico and Australia. No government can be effective when its leaders cannot discuss sensitive matters in confidence or talk freely in confidence with foreign leaders. President Trump frequently expresses his anger over leaks and has publicly pressed the attorney general to crack down. I want the attorney general to be much tougher on the leaks from intelligence agencies. Sessions said the Department of Justice has tripled the number of investigations and the FBI is dedicating more resources to leak cases. He also said the DOJ is reviewing guidelines for issuing subpoenas to journalists about their sources. We respect the important role that the press plays and will give them respect. But it is not unlimited. They cannot place lives at risk with impunity. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats said leaks are coming from a wide range of sources inside the government, including Congress and the executive branch. Mola Lenghi for CBS News, the White House. Session said on his watch, four people have been charged with unlawfully disclosing classified material or with concealing contacts with foreign intelligence officers. Former pharmaceutical CEO Martin Shkreli, Shkreli has been convicted of fraud. The 34-year-old was accused of defrauding investors and stealing from his old drug company to pay them back. Today, a Brooklyn jury found Shkreli guilty on two counts of securities fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud. He was found not guilty on five other conspiracy counts. Before the trial, Shkreli made headlines for raising the price of a drug for AIDS patients more than 5,000 percent. But that's not what this trial is focused on. In this case, prosecutors accused him of repeatedly misleading investors about what he was doing with their money. No sentencing date has been set. Authorities in Missouri are still investigating after a suspicious package dropped at an IRS facility led to at least 10 people getting sick earlier today. Those firefighters and medical personnel arrived at the facility late this morning and treated people for various symptoms, including vomiting. Crews believe a package could be the reason workers got sick. Officials say they isolated that package, put it away, and sealed it off from other workers. Authorities haven't said what was inside the package or offered any other details. It draws thousands of visitors every year, and once again, Weave Fest is in full swing. The Sioux Pass Ranch can hold up to 50,000 people a day and 35,000 campers this year in the 35th anniversary of the music festival. Organizers say they're proud of creating one of the leading country music festivals in the nation. What I think is really awesome is it's totally supported by the community here. There's so much pride in what they grew with this festival. And now last year, over the three days, we had 150,000 people. That's really impressive. And so they, they have a right to be proud of this festival because it's really something. The big artist ending the festival Saturday is Luke Bryan. And while country music fans are gathering by the thousands in Detroit Lakes, hundreds of thousands of motorcyclists are also flocking to another event that draws national attention in South Dakota. Today marks the first day of the 77th annual motorcycle rally in Sturgis. The population of South Dakota is expected to double during the rally. It runs through August 13th, and you can look for special reports from Sturgis starting next Monday on the Valley Today. 
Valley News Team's Lisa Badeau will be camped out in South Dakota giving us updates and special reports on the event throughout next week. The 9th Street and 13th Avenue East intersection in West Fargo will look a little different starting Monday. The city will start phase one of its reconstruction and widening projects. Phase one will focus on making dual left turn lanes in all directions, as well as some underground utility improvements. The work will last into November. 9th Street will remain open during construction, but 13th Avenue East will be closed between Prairie Parkway and 12th Street. This next one is for all you donut lovers out there. Sandy's Donuts posted on its Facebook page earlier today that starting August 20th, they'll be open on Sundays at both Fargo locations. The stores will open at their usual times, but will close at 1.30 in the afternoon on Sundays.